All right. Hello and welcome. So today, my name is Ian, as it is every other day from my perspective. However, I am joined by a very unique and special guest. And so if you would kindly introduce yourself, my friend. My name is Dave Myers. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. Yeah, yeah, it's so good to to finally have a chance to speak with you because I've seen your work online and I've seen some of these things you produce and I can really see how there's a certain quality to it that uh, it, it engenders respect for me. So I've been looking forward to being able to have a conversation with you. Right on, man. Yeah, I see your stuff on there too. I often see your, your content. Um, mm. I... Every morning, like I get up super early because I can't help it, and then I sit here and uh, watch. I like go do a go uh, human design search on YouTube, mm -hmm. and it spits out a hundred videos every morning, and I just kind of like scroll through that real quick to see if anything catches my interest. Because I'm a twelve twenty two, and I'm just constantly looking for something to listen to and pay attention to. And so I see you on there all the time. Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. And on TikTok and on uh, whatever else, Facebook. Yeah, right? I've been enjoying sharing on all the, the Instagrams, Facebooks, TikToks, YouTube. And YouTube right here is really my favorite place to share. By the way, like anybody who wants to find me anywhere on YouTube or anywhere else, it's Neutrino Radio or neutrino dot radio or neutrino underscore radio or capital n capital yeah. r no space radio yeah and um, yeah we'll be able to include that in the show notes and everything so that they'll okay. have a direct link for it cool and so without further ado let's get personal i have a primary question for you which is how did you get started into human design Right. Let me see if I can tell this story again without feeling like I'm just like repeating how I said it before. Okay. But, um, I was not looking for any sort of spiritual anything, any sort of empowering thing. I was just like living my life. And um, I mean, I had had some prior experience with like being slightly interested in astrology but not in any participatory way mm. and but then like somebody at work got into human design a projector mm -hmm. um who was an admin as was i to some extent and like we would she after being in into hd for like four months like was already typing everyone in the company especially at headquarters especially you know just you know the people that that she would interact with anybody she was just like getting everyone's charts and this is a company at the time was probably like 300 people with like you know mm. probably like 30 <laughs> people at in the hq circle and like so then suddenly everybody's just like knowing about human design and um i was told that i was a manifester and it was like oh cool you know like i again just didn't really understand that it was some sort of anything beyond like a myers-briggs or a, mm. or a, a zodiac mm -hmm. you know horoscope thing and but then like as a couple months went by uh I would have meetings with her for like projects that we were working on together. And um, mm -hmm. she would just start, started dropping these descriptive hints about manifestors and, you know, being like, yeah, this is why you're different. This is okay. This is what happens when you do this. This is how wow. people. And so it was sort of, as it went, I was like, okay. I, that makes sense. This makes sense. When she, I'm like, what are these? You want me to listen to an audio? Is that is to a, you know, she kept on telling me like, if you're right, if you want, I'll, you know, I can give you these, I can tell you what to 
what to how to go with it and um mm. and then eventually it, it like it got to the point where i i was uh my review was coming up and i had to like sort of negotiate like what the next year was going to look like as far as even like who was going to who i was going to report to at that point like i needed to re evaluate my entire work situation and like i was kind of uh wasn't getting a lot of respect from from my peers in the company i was just sort of like getting pushed out of the inner circle and um i would often be like salty about that and pissed off and we felt like they didn't appreciate me and this and that and it's like this manifester thing starting to look kind of interesting you know just because like i'm the only ma- one of two manifestors and in, mm. in uh you know in headquarters or whatever and whatever i was and some mm-hmm. sort of mm-hmm. and then so i just sort of like started meeting i had a couple like little meetings with this person like i was just like okay let me listen to this thing and i went i finally i went and listened to ra um for like you know all day pretty much and it started with the manifestor signature audio and then i like listened to all the signatures like all this stuff that was on jovian and i listened to all this stuff and it was just immediately like oh, okay this is some some real shit you know i'm yeah. gonna just do this i just i'm just gonna do this immediately i was just like this is you know i could easily just make this my life <laughs> this right away i went to a bookstore and started looking for books and i called up my friend i was just like what what book do i get She's like, you can't get it at the oh. bookstore and anyways then we met up at a coffee shop a couple days later saw my chart and then um and even in that when i finally did meet with hr like we really i like convinced her to let me have meetings every week with this person i was like this is like my um what do you call it mentorship or something i was just like i want to we're gonna meet up and, and it was like okay and we like we had you know worked through some shit, but then COVID happened and i got laid off and it didn't really matter uh-huh um but I did get to spend every minute studying human design, mm. being in my own aura. You know, I was one of those those COVID babies when it comes to human design, class of 27. That's right. <laughs> yeah. It was literally like a month, two months later. Like I, you know, started my experiment and then COVID happened like, too much actually my okay okay my human design four year is coming up in a week mm. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. gotcha yeah It'll my be the end of my fourth year yeah that makes sense that makes sense it's so cool to be able to see the timeline of how these things line up and i wonder how many people began to study a little bit more into their experiment when COVID hit because a lot i, I know that i certainly did at some point because I had started my experiment perhaps a year or two before, maybe, maybe a little more at any point I had began. And so at the point when COVID hit, it was like, oh, wow, this is the beginning of the seven year cycle leading up to 2027. And there's something massive happening. And so that for me was a really fascinating and kind of a a profound thing to see. It was like, oh, okay, wow, there is kind of like this thing that is approaching a shift because I'd never seen a situation like that in my entire life. And so at that point in time, I was basically door dashing. Luckily enough, I was door dashing. And so I was able to kind of do my own thing and it didn't bother me so much. And then some of the requirements and such made me kind of angry. And so I had to get over that and deal with all this stuff. And basically what I would do is I'd be driving around and I would listen to raw for hours on end until it reached this tipping point in my mind where it's like oh i can't actually comprehend what he's saying anymore and it's time to listen to music Mm -hmm. 
And so basically every day I'd be out dashing, listening to raw and listening to music and kind of absorbing this stuff into my being as I'm doing my job and getting paid. Absolutely. Listen to the hell out of some raw while I was door dashing. Mm. For sure. Like it simply makes sense. I'm able to entertain and engage my mind on something big picture while my body is doing something survival oriented in the moment that lets me keep going. And it felt very natural for me. Yeah, like the, the whole isolation thing from COVID was not anything that I ever complained about. <laughs> mm. All into the the big change that right. happened. And there was something you had said about when you had first started learning about this stuff and after sitting in sitting with your your friend or your coworker for a bit, there was this sensation of immediately like, oh, I can go into this and I can do this. Like can you describe what that means for you? Like what, or what it meant then? Like what, what that felt like? Well, it was just the, the validation of the, you know, hearing what a manifester is, mm. um, just made me be like, okay, I believe it. I just immediately, I was like, I couldn't, oh, let's, let's just pretend this is how things work and take it from there. And so, <sighs> Did you start informing at that point or? <laughs> yeah. I mean, when I, when I thought about it, when I could, when it, when it, when, I don't know, informing still kind of not a, as big a part of it as the mm. others. I mean, well, I mean, it, it, it is, but I'm so often alone. The times when I feel like informing is really, essential i feel like i i know when i have to do it but it's like i don't feel like it's it's one of those misconceptions of human design like oh you have to tell everybody everything you do now or, or like the projectors are waiting to be invited to everything in their life it's like no no that's not what it's all about like the, there's specific times when you like you should inform so do you At feel least, like do you feel like you have you have established enough time where you're basically in your own aura that there's hardly ever anything that's needing to be informed of? Is that part of it or I mean I, I am around people often, somewhat often, but mm. I mean also it's like the the manifester um strategy is you know, Rot will be the first to tell you it's an invention. It's not part, it's not an aura based thing. It's just a trick that we can do if we want. Mm. Um, but yeah, yeah he was, he was saying it helps. Yeah. It's obviously a good tool. <laughs> mm, mm -hmm. But yeah. I also, I don't know, sometimes people need to be surprised. Hmm. Yeah, and especially as uh, I remember looking at your chart and I saw 5-2, correct, as your profile? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and with that fifth line, I mean, that's part of the fifth line is being able to deliver, being able to provide something that could be surprising. Sure, and I also have a 51. Mm. Um, and... I don't know. There's just that part of the. There's a, maintaining a certain level of mystery about myself is like part of yeah. how I make an impact or like part of what's interesting about what I do. Right. You know, so if you tried to inform everything, there'd be no mystery and there'd be no power behind what you do. Yeah. Mm. Mm hmm. How do you feel I, about the inner authority of a um, solar plexus <laughs> what do i feel about it <laughs> <laughs> is that a fair question <laughs> sure i'm i'm into it you know i don't like wish i had a different authority i'm all you know i represent the emotional 
collective or whatever. I mean, I'm an, I'm an emo as, as hell. Like I'm super emo. It's my whole thing. Mm. I'm like two channels from the solar plexus to the throat, double what? barrel, emotional manifester. I'm that's what I am. So it's like, I don't know, especially now just embrace it and be all emo and don't try not to be emo. You know, it's my whole brand. Well, how are you with waiting for clarity? Hmm. I'm all about it. I mean, like, even before human design, I was, you know, the guy who was like indecisive, like, you know, and lots of pressure from other people and at work, like to just be able to like know what I want right away and agree with something or be, you know, <laughs> ready to jump into something. It's just like for me, it was always just like. I don't know. Do I have to decide right now? You know, it always was, you know, like, can I please wait till the last minute with my defined root and my mm. emotional authority? It's like, oh, no, I don't absolutely am all about waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Yes, that's so cool. That's so good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like once I discovered that I had emotional authority, that I was a generator, wow. For me, it was also very quick and rapid. It was this, okay, I'll try this out. And it was like this situation of, okay, you know, so far so good and so far so good. And this seems to make sense. And over time, more and more, it started to feel like, like I was able to take a deep, breath of fresh air like i was able to relax into who i am a bit more because i stopped trying to initiate anything as a generator i started to wait it's like okay i respond i don't have to figure it out all out and manifest something i can trust that life will bring to me what i need and that my body will sort it by its yes and no and wow right that must be fun <sighs> Yeah, I definitely, I, I sort of, you know, I some, I get kind of not jealous, but curious about the sacral, you know, like having a, some sort of sacral response. Like that's, yeah, that's, I mean, it's so, really, you know, it's really something for me. Like I have a really responsive sacral, if you hadn't noticed, and so I have to restrain myself and hold myself back from always responding all the time and. Mm -hmm. then there's no room for anybody else to even exist. And so that is a big part of my waiting for clarity. Because for my definition, I've got ego to solar plexus to root to sacral. Yeah. And then I don't have 21. Concentration with the yeah, exactly. pressurized top, emotions. Uh-huh. Double ratchet wave through the tribal needs and synthesis and through the community bonds and agreements. And that's where my son earth is it's 3740 that's my personality son earth mm -hmm. and so a big thing about me is being part of a good good bargain and a good agreement and being able to participate in a good way with a bigger picture than myself so from the beginning i've actually always kind of been a part of that and then human design was like bing that's your personality son earth that's like the essence of your cognition right there and it's like wow i mean i can see that and being able to see this quad motor authority definition structure without the 21 so i have no control there's a body here and it has a life to live and my mind is able to watch it <laughs> but you think 21s have control over that well at the very least they have the perception of control mm. goodness gracious Whereas for me, that's a bridging gate. And so my mind, my not self mind, wants nothing more than to find that control. <laughs> right. right, 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 of course. And so I'm able, to, I'm able to surrender that a little bit and trust my body's response. And it's been this situation of so far, so good the whole way through. And sometimes it gets really excited and pressurized and like, what is going to happen? I don't know. Other times it's more relaxing. Other times it's more satisfying. And the biggest thing I've been able to feel like as a generator is the feeling of satisfaction. Like when my sacral actually is being used correctly, 
when I'm allowing it to live its life, then I have this feeling of satisfaction that actually does the function of dissolving my frustration. Sure. And so within my personal experience, I don't experience a lot of frustration anymore. I still can, and it's not necessarily the end of the world because the biggest thing is now I can feel this difference between when my body has the energy for something or not. So I can tell when the frustration is, and I'm done, I'm leaving, that's not for me. And when the frustration is instead, okay, now we're rising up and trying harder because that's kind of what it becomes. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. It's, um, but then again, the generators are the quitters. Precisely. We quit all the things that don't belong to us, so long as we're correct. Or not correct. I mean, like, they're still quitting even when they're not correct. Well, Dude, some can, yeah. Thing. You know, it's a little bit of correctness seeping its way in. You know, they have to find a little bit here and there, and some people are more inclined this way or more inclined that way. And... <clears throat> That's why I don't judge. You know, I don't, I don't say anything is right or wrong in that sense because it's perfect exactly as it is. I don't get frustrated anymore. Okay. I get angry every day. Every day. Every fucking day. Indeed. Does it, does it matter? Is it a big deal? Um, no, I mean, it's just part, yeah. of the, part of the scenery. Right. And you see that? But it's that's usually what... just being annoyed. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like full fury. It's just sort of like, just... seriously, you know, that kind of shit. It's probably very similar to frustration. But I'm also seeing similar to bitterness. I'm seeing this sense that, well, it could have been better. It's it doesn't have shit. to be that shitty. Right. It's all distorted. Here's just the sexy version of all those things. Say again. Anger is just the sexy version of all those things. I thought it was bitter. Because at least with bitterness, it has that orientation of it's bitter because it could be better and this is how it could be better. At least that's what I see in bitterness. Whereas anger is a little bit more, oh, I'm going to tear it down, game over. <laughs> but anger sort out. of can bring about this kind of like, um, I don't know, it can just, it can, it can be fiery and and fun sometimes like it yeah. it's not like you know like bitterness is kind of bitchy whereas mm. anger is kind of like chest beating masculine right you know like a you know i'm i'm gonna win you know it's just very i don't know i think it's the the only really sexy um signature <laughs> Well, I, frustration I, is funny. You see, I have a hard time even calling the the distorted frequency the signature. I could call it the signature of the not self. Well, yeah, not self signature. But peace is also pretty cool. Yeah. Sure. I can't even imagine what it actually feels like. Like I don't have access to that field really. So Come I mean, on. Yes, you well, do. I mean. We all know what all these things are. Everyone's been frustrated. Everyone's been disappointed. Everyone's been angry. Everyone. I, I still like to imagine that, say, as a manifester, you could perhaps say things on anger and peace that as a generator, I don't have the same direct relationship with, that I could learn something from your words that I'm really open to being able to hear. Sure. Yeah, we're all somewhat more of an expert on our own experiences than, I don't know, not our experiences, but our... Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Sure. Oh, you're kind of frozen. Oh, we having some connectivity issue? Let's see. I don't know. It's a little choppy. The, the video is at least i don't know about the audio gotcha gotcha yeah sometimes my connection be, can be a little unstable over here it's generally good enough to hold things up it's all good as long as the audio is good 
right? It's so nice to be able to hear clearly. Especially hmm. for a 22. So yeah, you were you were mentioning a bit about um this hearing audio. Where is that? Hmm. Yeah, the, like the twelve twenty two, like looking for something to listen to and something to pay attention to. Right, exactly. That's that's actually a theme that I haven't thought about in in a little while because I've I've not been around people with the channel or even either gate very often. Hmm. And so there's that theme around those energies of is there anything worth really listening to? Right? Yeah. Yeah, the twenty two specifically. Mm -hmm. Which is my personality son. Oh, got you, got you. Both of those gates are in my cross. Mm. 12 and mm -hmm. 22. Where's the 12? Design Earth. Oh, the unconscious grounding. Cross of informing one. Yeah. Caution, caution, caution. Could it also be throwing caution to the wind in a moment? Oh, or not. Yeah. It's all or not. Yeah, could you share anything about a moment wherein you did throw caution to the wind and it worked out one way or the other? I I have little accidents all the time. Hmm. Yeah. Um it's definitely an or not situation. <laughs> um <laughs> I mean, caution, I guess the the thing I noticed the most about the 12 is the not feeling like it. You know, there's this, ten, the 12 has mm. this like, um, I'm not forgetting the keynotes, but there's just like this, this 10, it's like it, if you're either in the mood or you're not. And if, it, if the 12 doesn't feel like it, it just can't do it. Mm -hmm. you know? And the more I decondition, I guess the the less able I am to like make myself do anything. Precisely. Um, with this gate, this just makes it even more so. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's um, something I've felt a lot in my life too, and this notion that I don't have energy to do things that I used to be able to drive myself into accomplishing. Well, at least you have a defined ego. Yeah, it does come in handy. Sometimes it's like, well, that was a 12-hour day. I'm glad that I can rest now. <laughs> Go for it, generator. I mean, some people even put in 12-hour days as a regular thing. I couldn't even possibly imagine that. Like, I did... I know projectors who do that. I know it's absolutely insane. I can't imagine how they're able to maintain. It's incredible. We get sick. Right? It's incredible my, it's not. My roommate's a self-projected projector and he just works in the food service and just like hustles his ass off and just like, you know, these long days and like being a chef and like, I used to be oh. a chef and it's like, I don't know, just the hustle, like just like prove that you can do it, you know, it's insane. Sure. It's so for real. And then I tell him all the time, like, dude, you work way too much. And he's, he's like, one of these days, I'm just going to be a forest ranger. And I'm like, do it now, dude. Do it now. Hey, take care of yourself now. Because <laughs> there's no other time to start, really. But I mean, at this point, I don't, I'm unsure. It's another word for it trying not to freak out about where my next money is coming from you know it's like i'm mm -hmm. and i've gotten to this point where i'm working is almost impossible for me right you know like I've, i'm freelancing doing video editing and like i i'm 
getting to the end of like with you know what i'm doing with a client that i have and it's like i don't know where the next client's coming from and for to think about going out there and just getting a job at a restaurant or some place like absolutely sounds undoable to me i can't imagine what Mm -hmm. like working my ass off would be like in any capacity like even part-time I can't do a night shift either. I, like now, I can't help it but fall asleep early and wake up super early. And it's just like, okay, here's my, here's my limitations. Like, can you give me a job? I'm fifty, and I don't want to work in kitchens anymore. But I guess I can sort of like stand up for four hours. Please give me something easy to do where I can make money. It's like, uh, sounds impossible. I don't. I do not know what how working is going to work out in my life well, how does it sound at at least the first thing that comes to my mind as an alternate perspective how does it sound as sending out a wave of informing into the internet of these are the things i can do so things that are a little bit more enjoyable like maybe there's maybe there's a video editing maybe there maybe you enjoy talking about a chart or something i don't know maybe you don't maybe there's something else you enjoy doing for people i wish that i could just do readings and so that's like not that. like it i mean i could do sessions but i don't think i can do readings right it would be you know but i mean it's so based on if i feel like it you know with it with that 12 and then also with being emo as hell and being a grumpy manifester who wants to be alone all the time and I have 11 second lines and like Okay, like hopefully we I could like engage with you and like be for me to be the one who's the like the one supporting and doing I do have a tribal channel, but I'm I'm not like a I'm never gonna be anyone's therapist, especially a right. stranger. I just like I don't know how to do I think of actual what? reading. Yeah, yeah. What I see is some of that is like as a thirty seven forty sun earth. Part of it comes down to being really clear of perhaps what you would be informing them of. So you, if you have a container where it's like, okay, this is a system wherein maybe there's a list of people who've signed up and when I'm ready, I'll let them know and then we can find a time and do the thing. Some kind of thing that can work with the wave and how sensitive it is, because I know that can be fickle, I believe. Also, you know, the desire wave, this big up and down. You're getting a little choppy there, but I'm, I think I'm catching everything oh. you're saying. Um, yeah, I've mm-hmm. thought about what kind of sessions I could do with people, especially manifestors or emo people or creative people that I could give insight based on their design and I, I could do something like that. I don't know how to get started doing that. And I'm really bad at like putting myself out there and, and you know, like saying like, this is what I can do and I'm going to get clients and I'm going to do, it's like very hard for me to, it's another second line thing, just be like, look mm-hmm. at me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I do that anyways, unconsciously. Plus I'm like, have a presence online being myself unforgivingly in front of people so Mm -hmm. i am Mm -hmm. putting myself out there and i'm especially with the video stuff i feel like people can you know i do get these clients here and there i've had some clients and i and then Mm -hmm. i don't know hopefully that spreads a little bit but for me to promote myself as a specific thing that like i i provide this service and this is how much i charge for this specific thing and how much i charge for that specific thing and this is how long it takes me to do this and it's like there's no well, way this, like it, this everything is, exactly- is just like not good enough until i pour my heart and soul into it and i and i do everything in a very around the back door kind of like everything is hodgepodge and and yeah. like, done in some weird w- like work around and i'm not totally professional about anything it just ends up having this artistic like you know unique thing and people are like huh there's something about this but it's like mm-hmm. it doesn't look like that polished 
thing that somebody <laughs> paid like good money for. You know? so it's I was more like, polished than my stuff. Sure, sure. Well, that's the thing. I, I work around. It's like you, you figure out how to make it seem like more, that's the mystery that I'm talking about. Like if I told you how I did it, you don't have to. This is less what I'm impressed. Thinking. You know, what I'm saying is, you don't have to be able to. As a second line, I would never expect you to be able to clearly communicate what you can deliver. Like, I wouldn't necessarily expect that from you. What I would see in this situation is like, these are the the very rough guidelines of what I'm able to offer, and it doesn't even have to be like different things. For me, my simplicity with my sessions is that it's quite literally based around the exchange of now time presence like the fact that you and i are here together right now this is the kind of thing that i consider valuable and worthy of exchange and so what we're what anybody signs up for is a time slot and at that point we have time together where we can explore things or discuss things or say where you could inform them of things or maybe listen to what they have to say if you have any room for that. I know that that's part of my process is like whenever I'm with somebody, my first thing is, all right, now share a little bit about yourself and your experience so I can have a little bit of a frame where I'm like, you okay. can just You can keynote all day long. You could sit there and just, just run your mouth and just point at every part of someone's chart and just not ever run out of things to say. You know, and I'm, you've got like, what, nine first lines and you're a first yeah. line personality. Yeah. You're just like born to do that shit. And I'm well, just sitting there like, that's what people, as would soon as somebody asks me to, to read their chart, I, like, I forget the keynotes for the solar plexus. You know, like I'm just yeah. immediately can't think of a thing to say. That's totally okay. That's why people <laughs> wouldn't go to you for this, like, give me every single keynote, give me every single detail. They'd come to you for that thing where it's like, well, I like this person's energy and I want to hear what they have to say. And that's yeah, part you of hear it. There you go, folks. Come on down, Neutrino Radio. Yeah, come precisely. Find me. The link yes, right down there. In please the pay me to just sit with you like this. It would be so cool. Well, I imagine, at least if I was paying you to sit with me like this, <clears throat> if I was new into design or something i'd want to have my chart where we can talk about it and stuff yeah and we can have sure. everything ready and i can talk about your chart i just oh. <laughs> you gotta pull it out of me you know i'm a, i'm triple right, right. Mm. quad triple right mm -hmm. which one is the left bottom right bottom Focus. right perspective Okay, so you're focused on all that extraordinary depth that's with that you're observing. <laughs> you know, it's something so fascinating. I remember hearing about when you have three parts, either left or right, and then one part on the other side, is that that one part on the other side becomes almost a form of protection that solidifies the rest of it. Hmm. And so by being focused on whatever it is you find yourself focused on, it allows your receptivity to really pull something deep out from that when somebody pulls it out. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And I also have the ninth gate, but I do not have the 52. Mm which comes mm -hmm. through all the time like did you see how often i, I shift my position right while we're talking mm. <laughs> you can definitely focus on talking to you but i cannot sit still yeah all good no it doesn't cause me any problems i i consciously i even have the 52 with the nine so i have the whole channel and yet i still con se at least semi-consciously maintain more of a still maybe it is i suppose it is part of the body because i can't really it's not like I can unconcentrate. Eventually, I could be concentrated for so long that it's like it starts to get loopy or it starts to lose its focus. And yet, overall, I tend to have this element of concentration to where I am. And I am really grateful for that. I definitely can see that the qualities of that channel come through with people who have it seems like one of the more obvious ones 
maybe because mm. it's a format channel. But even compared to the other format channels, it's just sort of like so right there. Like the, these people like are so able to like get down in in it. Mm, that's all I that's all I want to do, especially because I got the sixteen forty eight on the other side split off, and so it's like there's this gunslinging depth that wants to get out there, <laughs> waiting for that invitation. <laughs> also, just the logic, the it's like the you know two ends yeah. of the logical spectrum precisely my definition is either logical or tribal so basically what i'm here to do is provide logical support for the tribe so that we can go forward into the future in a good way um what do you think is your your skill like what you know nice. like the, the well, 1648 is like sort of built for like a lifelong training you know it's like it's the channel of the kid who played violin eight hours a day you know mm -hmm. and eventually well, know, eventually well, makes money doing it but not not before his parents dump right it has to have dollars. practice it has to have practice and that's definitely something i've seen and i'll get i'll get into that in one moment i need to attend to my fire cool mm -hmm. It, my my furnace is broken right now, so I'm doing space heater in my little office room mm. with the cats, and I'm wearing like I I have another pair of socks that I want to put on. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I was actually at the point where I got USB rechargeable heating socks, and oh, they're pretty cool. That sounds dope. They're pretty cool. I actually I made um, leg warmers out of the sleeves of a sweatshirt nice yeah there's this oh yeah here we go uh-huh uh-huh yeah i'm gonna put this on so nice to be cozy oh my god and yeah, i'm yeah. trying to fix yeah. my furnace like by myself to save money mm. and i failed to do that before it got down to 16 degrees but i don't know right. space heater that helps. That helps a lot. I can also see that cat in the background. That's oh, nice. Yeah. That's Littles. Oh, yeah, right there on the chair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so to, to answer this question around um, what my skill is, well, the funny thing is what I have the most practice in is one of the least valuable things I've done, which is play video games. <laughs> so there's been a lot of time put into that field thankfully nowadays it doesn't captivate me like it used to because the the physical real life and things that happen are a little bit more exciting than the virtual it's also world. becoming more and more of a of a valuable skill as well it can be and you know it gives me this logical quick reasoning sense that is part of it and when it comes down to what I see is that I've really, really enjoyed stuff like this, these encounter experiences where I'm able to be one on one with another person and communicate. And so I kind of feel like I, I like to talk. I like to talk with people about things. I don't Maybe like you to... should be a Twitch streamer. Well, part of that comes down to the potential of having reliable internet in a good environment where and i can easily hop into that situation right here mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to pop in for an hour or two and then maybe move on to something else mm -hmm. yeah so, twitch is the land of the undefined sacrals yeah honestly <laughs> the, the 10 hour stream every day there's it's the epitome of not oh. knowing when enough is enough that's so true so, yeah so i guess true. it's not for generators well, the thing is, is if I were to do streams on Twitch, is that I wouldn't do 10-hour streams. I simply would not, unless I wanted is that to. Is possible? 
if I really wanted to, I could do it. And if I wanted to do, maybe I would do a four hour thing here or there. Uh, what I heard is that regularity is the key. And so I'd have some kind of regular thing and it'd be like, Papa and hello, and there it is. And, and that'd be fun, perhaps. Yeah, of course it would. The thing it's so is, hard to make an impact on, on Twitch, though. Yeah, it's kind of um, a low, lowest common denominator space. I've enjoyed being able to share here on YouTube. And uh, yeah, being able to have these one-on-one -on -one conversation connection experiences to me is where it's the most interesting and fascinating and exciting. Because this like experience right here where you and I are together, there's never in the history of forever could this conversation happen again. There could be another iteration in the future, perhaps. That's possible. But it could never be this conversation again. And that's why, for me, I'm always trying to dig into this moment to see what this moment can unfold that's different and unlike any other moment. Through that, I mean, but, but how could any, I mean, it's really the, the possibility of any two things being the same is kind of, that's not like they, they say that no poke no like no two poker games have ever been the same mm. you know stuff like that well it depends on the details you're looking at if you're only counting the cards and the movements the cars make i imagine that may have happened before if you're taking into account that there are individuals there who have lived lives you know and they're thinking <laughs> thoughts you know i mean it's not possible so true <laughs> That was one of the most profound moments for me. It was a big acceptance of what is. Because I have a, a, six, a 17th gate in the sixth line. And so a classical keynote for this is perfected following is one and the same with perfected leading. And so a quality of this line is being able to see how everything fits and connects and exchanges with everything else in a beautiful harmony if you allow it to be what it is and so i discovered that because at first i was upset and sad or annoyed about my lack of a 62. my 17 does not have a 62 so i don't have a defined ajna and my way of thinking is not consistent and i don't have access to details to back up whatever it is I think or believe or have to say. I, I don't have fixed access to the details for all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, wow, at first it was, if only I had those details, maybe things would be different. And then I thought about it for a moment of, okay, how is it possible that these details could be different? Well, I was given a lack of fixed details because there was no planet in that gate at the moment of my birth. And it also wasn't there 88 degrees of the sun before my birth. So I don't have the gate. And I was like, okay, the only way in which the planet could be there is if the structure of the universe from the very beginning was different. If the ver like everything would have to be different all the way back to the very beginning and therefore the entire universe would be different and there's no relevancy whatsoever. I was like, oh, huh. I'm in this universe and this is the body I was given. It's like, wow. Wait, do you mean you accepted it? Yeah. It's the channel of acceptance, right? exactly exactly and i don't have the details to build that acceptance in a fixed way and yet i found my way to be like hey i found acceptance it's not necessarily always there in the moment like say if i was playing a game and i get frustrated that i lost sometimes that can be upsetting <laughs> so at least you know one of those things you get to experience often you know you have half of it so yeah it is nice having access to logic because it helps me have some direction to frame my insight. I have the 43rd gate in the fourth line, exalted Mercury, one track mind. And so it's, it's as if I'm deaf to things that don't fit the track of what my mind is, even though it's undefined. So it's not fixed. There's still a track to it. The track? Yeah, it's called the one track mind. Oh, got it. That's yeah. that track. 
<laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. So A kinda, track. Got precisely. It. Okay. So I'm deaf to the other tracks that are out there. And so the logic helps me to be able to unfold this insight that I don't have the 23 to naturally break it down into words. And it, it eventually has this opportunity to unfold through logic based on human design. Like human design gave a voice to me. I didn't know how to talk before. I didn't have anything to say. It's like, what's actually valuable to say? I don't know what's true. There's nothing to mm. say. And then human design came around and gave me all these details. And it's like, whoa, this is the whole human being mapped out. And I can talk about almost anything now. Nice. Hmm. And yeah. yeah. I think that happened for a lot of people, just like finding this thing to be obsessed with recently. <laughs> like, oh, I'd, I'd like to talk about this all the time, every day. <laughs> right. It's the most interesting stuff. And that my first lines really, really enjoy it because it's like I finally have a solid foundation as a 1-3. I spent so much time investigating online all kinds of esoterica and unknown and fringe theories and ideas because I have a f second color motivation, hope, behind it. So I'm looking at the outskirts to find what hasn't been comprehended and what hasn't been understood yet. And I researched everything I possibly could in all childhood. And I never found human design. And then like a one, three, I suddenly found myself in a two story house of people living design in California. And it was like, whoa, it was, I kept coming back every few weeks, weeks because they had this uh, Kangen water machine where I could get really clean, purified, powerful water uh -huh. and all kinds of really good stuff and interesting conversations. And no matter what I investigated in my childhood, I never found design. And then it bumped into me in real life one day. And it was like, whoa, I can talk now. There's something to talk about. You know, there's something worthy of sharing. Yeah, like me too. Like I never, I always was like real creative and like, like, you know, doing music and videos, you know, more recently. But like, it was always just sort of like, I know I have all this ability to like be creative, but it was like, there was never any sort of like, I never had like a niche before and like suddenly like human design it's like comes around and there's all of this knowledge to draw from and all these ideas and all these themes and all of these like there's just so much stuff now that i can be expressive about and like sort of there's an educational side of it there's a there's a mystical you know abstract side of it there's like all of this stuff that i can sort of like oh now i can just like make content like there's just an endless amount of content that i can make about mm -hmm. this thing instead of being like oh i just need an idea i just wish i had like something to to express i don't know what's worth like you know putting my energy into and now suddenly it's like there's there's all these things right human design and so that that brings me into this question of how how valuable has it been in the feeling experience of life that you have since discovering this stuff? Like what has that, what impact has all this had on your like inner experience? Mm -hmm. Well, the biggest thing is like this knowledge of having two souls you know, just these two different things that have different sort of objectives. Yeah. And this knowing that like the mind is is like has this weird agenda that is not my agenda. And so yeah. I've always been a big worrier, a big like stress person. And I still do that, but it, at least now I can be like, dude, stop. You know, like yes. we're not doing this right now. Or, this isn't helping or this isn't. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, this knowledge of passenger consciousness or the potential for it. And just like knowing my mind as like this, not like an adversary but just like that it doesn't it, it's not at the top of the it's not the ceo you know it's like <laughs> it wants to be but it's not and 
you know, to be able to demote that, mm. um, that's like the, the biggest yeah, beautiful mechanism, you know. That's right there where it is, because that's the magic of it. As the story goes, for 90,000 years, we were dominated by the Ajna and what we could think about things. When we were seven centered, that was our dominant awareness center. That was the newest thing. And so we just strategically dominated everything without an ounce of receptivity. And then 1781 happens and all of a sudden there's now receptivity within the human organism and there's something new possible. I'm not so sure that there was no receptivity. Well, it's this mystical phrase of the closing of the door. And so what I see before that is we had the five centered Neanderthal human who was purely sure. receptive. And that's when we were perfectly right. in accord with right. nature. Yeah, perfectly yeah. right. And like an animal in Garden of Eden, like it's just earth and it's beautiful and perfect. And then the seven centered human came around and started dominating everything. <laughs> I just, I kind of like, I've, it's hard for me to imagine being, having self reflected consciousness without being somewhat receptive. Mm. You know? That's fair. That's fair. Perhaps it's simply the fact that they didn't have receptivity to the depth that we have. Yeah. Surely, in, in the sense of like, we have stories of Buddhas and Christs and Vishnus and Shivas and all these powerful beings that supposedly walk the earth. And surely they had an ounce of receptivity to something greater in them. <laughs> you know? Otherwise, we wouldn't right. have these great stories. Yeah. People were channeling stuff and. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I wonder when it was like back then. There's literature. You know, you can read books by people from back then and see how so they many. were thinking. And I mean, stories they wrote. And there's also, have you ever studied Rudolf Steiner? Mm -mm. Oh, well, then he could give some more light on the human evolutionary path and how we've shifted that you might enjoy then because. He describes, at least through some of the talks that I've listened to, different ages of human history. So Steiner was born after 1781 and before Ra. He was around the time of the Theosophical Society, 1900s and such. And something that I can describe that he gave me of our history that I can't let go of so far, at least, is the notion that we had a civilization called Lemuria. And that was one of the very first human civilizations. And we were more feminine and matriarchal then. We were more in harmony with nature. And out from Lemuria came Atlantis. And Atlantis is when the patriarchy began, in essence, when the masculine started to step into its power and it rose up with high technology and then reached too far and then caused the fall of Atlantis or the fall from grace into a dark ages. And then there's other civilizations of like, uh, I think Persians and Indians and various other details that he gets into with, with an order to it and directions. And he talks about how, I think it might've been the 1500s perhaps was was his perspective on it i think that was around the enlightenment and actually i'm not certain on the dates anymore however there was a shifting of energy that occurred wherein there was a point in time in say ancient greece or rome where we could look up at the sky and we could see the sun as a deity and a life force giving agent and you didn't have to talk about it because everybody knew it it was steeped into what we are we could all see it we could see these spiritual forces everywhere hmm. and then there was a veil slowly put over things to where we became less and less aware of the subtle reality as we became immersed in material reality and so then eventually after going so deep into material stuff eventually another wave of subtle awareness has begun to take hold wherein we're becoming aware of these things that we used to know you know that used to be obvious 
And now we have new words for them even. And so we can breathe life into this Maya iteration of stuff rather than the ancient civilizations and what they thought about stuff. And I was given this yogic notion recently that whenever we're thinking about who we think we are and how we fit in the world, it's basically a result of memory. It's basically a result of living in the past and guiding the life from the past and being able to see the present as it is now. Well, it allows us to go beyond only what we have remembered from the past as if that's what's going to happen again, happen again in the future. We can see the present unfolding as it is different from the past. What was his name again? Whose name? <laughs> Steiner. <laughs> Rudolf Steiner. Yeah, he's um he's a really good thinker and he's he's really far out and there's somebody on YouTube who has permission to do audiobooks of him. So if you look up Rudolf Steiner, you'll see a channel that has like half an hour clips and then it's got like the 10 hour lectures. So it's it's all out there on YouTube. Okay. Good cuz um, I don't read. Yeah, I prefer to listen myself. Thank God Ra recorded everything he ever said. Cuz I just, just about, yeah. I'm not I have only 3 first lines. Mm. And um and I've got even less fourth lines and third lines, but I don't um yeah, I'm just not good at at reading anymore. I used to. Mm. I used to but I I feel like the reason I read so much in my twenties was that I just like wanted to be cool. Oh. You know, like I wanted I thought I'd probably put some value on intellectualism and like mm. um, book readedness and stuff like i'd be always like work like have a book that people would see oh, me reading yeah. you know oh this is the what what you know translated work is this but like <laughs> and now i just don't care like the last book i actually read was the the last harry potter book when it came oh. out and wow. i like haven't read a book since then like i cannot read it, even mm. like a facebook post like if it's more than a couple of sentences, I'm just like, oh, God, I don't care. I don't care. How do people pour their hearts into these answering some question about whatever? Oh, that's so funny. I know the feeling so much. I My own, like, I don't care anymore. I know that feeling. It's like, I've had enough. You know? I've only, only recently have I read a book in a long time. I was actually gifted a book about the Theosophical Society called Madame Blavatsky's Baboon. And so it described the history of occultism and Eastern mystical tradition in the West and, and what happened here. And it's, it's like, wow, this is a wild journey of looking at all these newly nine-centered beings and their really sophisticated not-selves taking advantage of this higher perception that they're kind of got you an know, Jonah. Of. Yeah. Jonah Dempsey. Yeah. Yeah. He, um, he's really into like reincarnation and, and past lives and stuff. Uh -huh. And like, according to him, there's a lot of people from the theosophical society are reconvening in the human design society. But not society, community, or lack thereof, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So he's, yeah, he's aware of some theosophicals that are, uh, that are in our yeah. little world. Yeah, I actually heard him mention that in, in something he shared on YouTube recently. I don't remember the name of the person. It might have been a duke or something. It was somebody who he saw as Ra's previous incarnation. Mm -hmm. And so this is somebody I heard a little bit about in the book, and I, there's a photo of him in there. However, I didn't it's receive enough. Like Ra. Well, it, it does kind of look like Ra. I don't have access to it right now. However, it was like, oh, that guy does almost kind of look like a bit of Ra in there. That's interesting. I didn't hear enough about his behavior to, to see any character, though. Only saw a picture. That's all you need. Yeah, it's, it makes a difference. It's like, wow, look at that. <laughs> Interesting. 
yeah my own my own relationship with past lives or future lives is very grounded in that in the past when i was younger i might have been very interested nowadays i don't really care very much except for the sense of like sometimes new things will show up and it's like oh yep that makes sense as that might have been last time <laughs> or that might have been to get too excited about that kind of stuff yeah it's a distraction you know it does, it's not really important it's mm -hmm. it can be fulfilling and enriching along the way if you're already like who you are and you're learning more about yourself however if you're trying to avoid who you are by learning about who you aren't anymore that's just a distraction <laughs> yeah i mean i can see certain i've heard stories of it being very helpful for people mm. but not because they were just so curious to find out you know if they were some famous explorer is like no like they i have a friend here in austin a guy that i know here who's who does past life regression or it's what do you call it q r r t oh uh, yeah yeah uh-huh um and like he before he did his whatever went his own personal process with it he had a like a birthmark on his neck that had been there his whole life and mm. after he did it the birthmark went away and it had the past life memory like had something to do with like a neck like being like it was just like so obviously yes see stuff like you know, that those are the stories that i love because that kind of stuff points to the potential that mm, well it's something i haven't said or even thought about in a moment it's a phrase that came to me one day and it is infinite parallel realities simultaneously coexisting see i <laughs> i used to be really into the idea of of multi of a many worlds thing but now i kind of don't i kind of am looking mm -hmm. for information to support that that is not the case why is that because of all the bad decisions and fuck ups and near death experiences that i've had just like mm. i like to think that like there's no there's there's no other options you know like if there really is no choice then i i can't feel bad about the things i did you know yeah, I mean, I, I thoroughly agree with that entirely. But if there's well, all, if everything possible happens, then it's like, Jesus, like now mm. you know, people are mourning my death, like after my, I do something stupid. In some other reality like, or something. For, yeah, for the rest of the, like my, my niece doesn't know me in like so many realities. Right, there's too I, much to think about it and it doesn't matter whatsoever. That's also true. <laughs> <laughs> well, but when you... something happens i just i like to think like okay that that was supposed to happen for a reason and now i'm gonna go on through the rest of my life having like that experience to learn from instead of like god i was you know now i'm just like now i'm I, in this reality i'm alive but in all these other ones i i'm fucking dead <laughs> or we're never born <laughs> Or I like have them paralyzed from the neck down. Like oh, those are tough ones. Brain damage or something. You see, that's part of where my acceptance comes in. And it's like, well, I could accept that maybe they exist out there somewhere. I can also accept that they don't have any relevance to who I am right now. And then I hear stories about this past life where and somebody has this scar and they have that regression therapy and it clears up the scar. And it's like, well, those seem like they were coexisting in a way mm, right i mean what's the deal with that yeah right <laughs> i mean this is have you ever heard of dan winter it's another person that's really cool he's still no. alive though no yeah dan dan is one of my heroes actually who's still alive he's um he has a new class starting up on zoom for free like monthly classes, I believe, on like the 21st. 
I think. And essentially, he has provided the solution to compression and embedding of information and action at a distance. He has the math formula for all action at a distance. And it's also the formula for gravity. Help but think of Silicon Valley. Um, Pied Piper. Well, he's in Paris, uh, actually. <laughs> um, I know the TV show. They 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 create they like come up with this new data compression thing, and it's hilarity ensues. But tell well, me more he, about this guy. <laughs> yeah, it's not simply data compression. This is um. Well, I suppose it is. However, it's the data compression of the quantum field. Oh my god. And so it's um. It's the math on why gravity happens, basically. And so there's a there's a formula, and it's you know about Planck, like Planck length or Planck time. I've heard that word. So essentially, it's like a pixel for the universe and for space time. No matter where we go, there's always Planck is the same. There's like and, a holographic universe. Um, yeah. Particle. It was it's part of it. And so the the well, the gravitobiology of it, like the physics of how it goes through, is that there's Planck, and then you multiply that by the golden ratio, and that gives you one value, and then you could multiply the golden ratio by itself any number of times before multiplying with Planck to get all of a sudden you have every single color you have various sequences for where gravity comes from and you have this mathematical construct that lines up with all these kinds of forces and so it essentially describes this curve of a bell that allows for things to be embedded within it without losing information and so what happens is that the electromagnetic wave it shifts from the like the lateral like the up and down into the horizontal or the transverse also called like scalar so it flips through the zero point and dan winter's formula is the zero point it's how to access the zero point basically and <clears throat> and i know it sounds like an awful lot <laughs> it simply it's seems to intriguing. be intriguing we got kind of like fractals and truth and stuff happening okay yeah so quite literally apparently there's this group called the metal cathedral and i believe they're in maybe norway or germany somewhere around there on the the easterly the eastern side of the earth compared to me over here on america and <laughs> on america yeah wherever you know and um so they are actually apparently teaching children who have been born blind how to see through their third eye oh my god and one of the first things they see are their ancestors holy shit <laughs> <laughs> okay so there's there's a lot of cool stuff he's also got a device called the therify and so that is like two glass cones wherein it's like bigger on one end and it gets smaller and it gets bigger on the other end and what it does is it creates a, what's called like a living plasma vortex where you can see plasma spinning around in there because there are special gases in there. And you put some kind of electric, electric field through it. And it creates this, honestly, what I would say is what it creates is a deconditioning field. Come on. And so there, there are centers all around the world for Therify already. You've hacked the, uh, the system. Everyone thinks they're deconditioning faster than everyone else. Now we finally have a, a machine that does it for us. Like people say they're like lucid dreaming and they're feeling a buzz and maybe they have a little bit of trouble sleeping because they're so awake afterwards. And there's reports of, well, the body working better and things feeling healthier, if I can put it that way. I'm not going to make too outrageous of claims if I haven't already. <laughs> <laughs> How can I tame this down? Things feeling healthier. Yeah, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's lawyer talk. <laughs> well, I don't talk about it too much. However, I am also studying the solution to lawyer talk. What is that? It's called correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar. 
It's a mathematical interface on language wherein I can give uh, a number value to every single word and everything on a page and then syntax those number values to certify whether or not a fact has been stated. I can also write sentences backwards and forwards that say the same thing with full closure. I don't yet have full closure, so I'm still working on it. And yet that's the skinny. <laughs> Sounds like the door to madness. Well, I used to be mad. You know, I had a full psychotic break in like 2012. I was out really? there, you know, it felt like I was living in a music video for six months. I mean, Ra, Ra went through stuff very much like that. And also having to do with these kind of like value, sentence values and word puzzle languages and like days mm -hmm. where he would only speak backwards and um you know like getting obsessed with like base theory applying it to every little thing in his life and you know just like becoming like completely obsessed with these kind of um you know these yeah. these weird like mental games that he could apply to like everything and it you know he would talk about it like okay i had to stop i had to stop doing all of that stuff <laughs> you know one, one day he woke up having written like a whole book that was just runes that didn't make any sense to him and he didn't remember doing it and this was early in his, after his encounter right yeah i mean maybe even some of it before that i mean obviously the base theory stuff was after and like a lot mm. of it was after but i feel like he was prone to these kinds of um these exercises i guess you could call them yeah, one thing I remember is I listened to a lecture the other day and he was describing how before he met The Voice or anything like that, he was working in Canada developing a music video for rock and roll and the government gave him like a million dollars to make this video. And he was he had this company who was making media stuff and it was a regular thing that he would disappear and maybe be gone for a day or two. And so he was describing this one day that he disappeared. And on this day, he happened to notice himself bawling his eyes out and he had no idea why. He's like, yep, yeah, I'm totally crazy, totally crying. And I have no idea why I'm crying. And I'm, I'm crazy. It's okay. I'm crazy. It's no big deal. And so that ended up being his trip where and he got he got the last boat ride somewhere and he got the last plane ride somewhere he and he's running at the gas station and walks out the back door. Precisely. Like that's yeah. so beautiful. Like he 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 goes to the gas station, he leaves it running, he walks in for cigarettes, and then he leaves and he leaves his car in the lot running so he walks to get the last boat ride somewhere. And it's like Huh? That's a crazy person. <laughs> And Absolutely. I think, hmm. well, I think it's really valuable, valuable to be able to, to not get caught up in the crazy making to the point where we lose our lives. And yet to also not be so closed off to anything that might be crazy making that we don't learn, that we don't grow, that we don't get bigger in some way, that we're not learning. Because I feel like that sanity insanity thing is not a not a it's a blurry line. Right. It's making me think of an in breath and an out breath. <laughs> right, right, right. Two sides of the same coin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and my dad went like totally completely crossed over from being yeah. like an attorney wearing three-piece suits every day to like being the crazy long-haired guy reading tarot cards at the coffee shop not having a place to live like the oh. like he totally completely flipped and he was he was a 54 4 personality son um which you know it's supposed to be the most mystical line in the right in the wheel he and, had um, his encounter experience and he's never the same as soon, the second like something flipped and then as soon as that happened just like every possible mystical thing he was just what are you telling me? i've never heard of that before and just because just suddenly like everything was validated there was like no mm. 
no magical, mystical thing that he didn't believe in suddenly. And it was just like overflow, just like, wow. And just totally, completely went insane. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. My own, my own mother had her own bout with insanity and it ended up taking her life early. And that was mm -hmm. shortly before I had my own loss of sanity for a period. Really? Yeah. As messy nasty situations and life challenges and part of like trials and acceptance because it's like at, at one point when i was a child my mom had remarried someone and it wasn't somebody we had really even known and been connected with and then one day i really didn't like this guy and i didn't know how to tell her so i basically grabbed a trash bag and i moved in with a friend of mine and I never really checked in to see how she was doing or anything. Uh, thankfully, she got to see me graduate high school in second place. So she got to see, like, I, I, I did something, you know? She got to see something. Second and... place. Your, your high school was a com competition. Well, I was salutatorian. There were only, like, 300 of us in total. Gotcha. So I had to make a speech on the front. So it was, it was like, a thing. Okay. And so she okay, got so to so this was, that. you were, like, in high school when, when all this happened? uh yeah it was well it was right after high school she got to see me graduate high school get this accolades and all this stuff and but i never reached out to her and so for a long time i would kind of beat myself up about how i could have been a better son mm -hmm. and so essentially nowadays that's part of my mission is if somebody doesn't have a good relationship with their parents i'm like are you sure you haven't said hello? Are you sure you don't want to say hello? Because they're going to be gone sooner or later. Right. And it wasn't even nefarious on my end. I was just too caught up and busy in my own stuff. Like as a 1-3, I'm so self-absorbed. I didn't even... I had no consideration. I didn't right. care. Yeah. I love... You didn't know she was going to die? Yeah. Like I didn't know it was like that at all. And we were even scheduled to meet shortly before it happened. <laughs> so... Oh my God. I mean, it's, it's part of life. It's part of life. And so that was part of my journey and coming to terms with who I am and what life is all about. Yeah. And there was a nugget of information I was given from Terrence McKenna that I don't even necessarily really believe. And yet I, I, it really was beneficial to me in the experience is that Terrence said that you cannot reach enlightenment until after your mother has passed. Or at least someone had told him that. And I was like, oh, that's, that's kind of nice. You know, I'd, I'd like to be enlightened. Maybe I can make a difference that way. You know, maybe it's part of the background story and it's all okay, you know. I can, I can, I can go somewhere with that information. It works for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, the fun thing is, too, is, like, the previous two guests I had on this show haven't even been into human design before. And those two people have both had their own enlightenment of experiences in life. Well, now there is this big before and after. Well, now nothing's the same anymore. And with one of them, it was like something went off in the crown chakra, and now their mind is in bliss all the time. With another one, it was like a brother worked in hospice for a moment and they were working with people who were about to pass on. And it's as if all these people passing on had a message. And it's like, there's a similarity between all these people. And so my guest spent like years talking with his brother who was at China at the time. He spent years talking with him over email about the conversation and what happened and what the realization was. And one day he had the realization himself and he ended up writing a book about the conversation and stuff. And so it's like, yeah, I think enlightenment is something that isn't actually like, it's not like you're suddenly levitating and lifting books with your mind and stuff like that, or teleporting. It's like, I accept this life for what it is, and I can see how beautiful it is, because I know it's bigger than whatever my mind likes to get upset about. And it's just an ad addiction in my mind that likes to get angry about this shit, because it could be better, and yet in reality, it's another opportunity to like, be, eh, who cares? That's beautiful. Look well, at that. Ra, Ra's opinion of enlightenment was that it it was beside the point. It's like it's it's that's it's too like that's I forget what how he said it, but it's kind of like that's it's over the top. It's like it's it's <laughs> beyond. I don't know. It, it's not the. It's not what we're trying to do. Like it, although he would he would use it as 
a throwaway term like he'd always say like you know stupid before enlightenment stu- stupid after like he loved to uh-huh. say that but in general like this whole enlightenment thing is like it's kind of like a, a seven centered ambition you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like being yourself is not being this exalted enlightened thing that you're imagining you know it's not I, the point well, okay see yes I, I can say that it's not what you think it is, although I would say being yourself is an exalted thing. Okay, exalted might not be the right word, but I mean, I wish I could, I, I'm, I'm going to have to go back and see what he exactly said about it. Somebody I, watching is itching to jump in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need um, to, one second, I need to check my fire again. For sure. Yeah, that ought to be good for a bit. Ah, yeah, that was running down a little there. And yeah, the funny thing about the way in which this video stream functions with Google Meet, I can't even see if there's a chat or who's there. Have you? There's oh, someone wait. here. Because YouTube live, you can't <laughs> do comp- you can't do two people, right? You have to um, go through another like a, a different yeah, app. Yeah, I think to- so. I think so. I don't know if YouTube can do multiples yet. That'd be a good feature for them to add. Essentially, what I found is that with Google Meet, I give Google ten bucks a month. They give me the premium stuff with the Meet, and I also get a terabyte of online cloud storage. So that's that's really convenient. Okay. Oh, yeah. And the, I think the thing about enlightenment for me nowadays is that I do see it as kind of a hangover term from the seven-centered being. And I don't think it is what we necessarily think it is. As far as I can tell now, it seems like to follow my strategy and authority feels like being an enlightened being. It feels like I know how to be myself in the world, and that's what it is. <laughs> That's definitely something you could label as enlightenment. But I don't, you know, it's that's not nirvana, you know. That's, uh, that's a very pedestrian version of enlightenment. That's not a greedy thing like, to to aspire to, you know. Like Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely course. believe. Well, part of my experience has been that I've witnessed I've witnessed magic. I've witnessed things that have occurred that I couldn't possibly rationally exclaim or explain to the point where it feels like the mundane of life and the magic of life go through the same moment to moment process and they're not very separate from each other. Sure. I mean, there's plenty of mystical within the mundane like in the human design like that's a that's a theme that comes up a lot Mm -hmm. Um, yeah 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 so how you something that i particularly you know feel like i i have some sort of involvement in this mystical mysticalization of the mundane what are you gonna ask say yeah, I'm, I'm more curious about what you were just saying. This um, an involvement with mundane into magic or mystical. Is that what you were saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that is a beautiful thing. Being able to see the magic within the mundane. I think at that point we're we're less bored or anxious because we can see 
that there is this force at work. We can see that there are things at work that are greater than our own comprehension. And by trusting our place within that, that flow, things tend to work out. Yeah. I mean, being in flow is just, you know, the point for everybody, I guess. Um, but even still, like, you know, with our knowledge, if you want to call it that, this idea that, you know, that, the, that even inanimate objects have a you know, magnetic monopole and that everything is, just, everything has the potential for life and that we're all part of this big, neutrino field that you know every everything that exists like neutrinos pass through everything and go through every one of us and then those neutrinos go through everything else and it's all just connected and i don't know there's this very like it, the whole system is a scientific approach to explaining mysticism so it's just built into the whole thing, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's something I really appreciated. And it gave me the explanation for how astrology makes sense and also why it didn't make sense. It's because, say, the astrologers have been able to pick up on some of this neutrino information that's gone through these planets and been influenced. And in some way, they've been able to form some, some semblance of what's going on there. And then being able to see oh now it's in this tone at this minute and at this other minute it's at a different tone and all of a sudden you're a receptive personality instead of just strategic or something like that and that totally changes how the reading unfolds and how this person is and old school astrology couldn't pick up on such small arc shifts like that yeah yeah this notion that it is our consciousness with a refresh rate only a teeny bit behind the speed of light. <laughs> Why do you call it a refresh rate? Well, it's, it's like the screen on a computer. The screen on a computer is refreshing with new information 60 times a second or maybe 90 times a second. Okay. And so the refresh rate of our consciousness, we're receiving <clears throat> new programming information from the source, from the sun and from the stellar background frequency. Every second we're receiving like trillions and that's a In lot of information instant you're receiving trillions yeah you know like it's there's a lot of information in every moment i could speculate on that for hours mm. i don't i don't want to get into yeah, thinking true. about thinking about that right now i mean yeah, so is there anything else that draws you in that you'd like to say before we perhaps bring this to a close? Uh, I'm not necessarily. I mean, I could I could for sure, you know, talk about all this kind of stuff like plenty. I just I don't I if you want to pull something out of my rightness I'm totally cool with it. I don't. It, do I have something else I want to say? Not exactly. Pull something out. Well, what else could I pull out? Mm. Is there perhaps any interesting stories or experiences or feelings around your creative process that could be fun to share? Hmm. You, know, you want to be more specific? Mm. Perhaps has human design and this notion of waiting influenced your creativity in any way? Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, because it's... Now there's this waiting that happens that instead of like oh there's an idea i'm gonna do it it's more like there's an idea i'm gonna do it when i might do it when the time is right you know mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. manifester thing is like emotional 
manifest there. I don't know. It's, and then just the wisdom to know what's a good idea and what, what isn't and what's not for me. What So also to just wait to work on something at my own pace to not feel mm. pressured to finish something or mm-hmm. that it has to be a certain way to just let things come out as they come out. Mm-hmm. Tons of stuff. Like also just like letting it manifest instead of thinking too much about like is the you know you know just like watching myself just move stuff around and play with things and see what and then something comes out of it instead of like over thinking you know what's the best way to do it absolutely that's something that you see i'm i'm two parts right and two parts left so my personality is receptive and my design is strategic And so I used to try and pretend to be strategic with my receptive personality. And it could never compete with the strategic personalities. It can never compete at that level. (laughs) Right. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, it's such a blessing to be able to allow my receptivity to unfold in its own timing rather than some timing that I imagine it needs to be in. Also, you know, if you ever work with anyone else, like everyone thinks strategy is is the way. And so, Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. there's all this conditioning to be strategic. Right. And then you can find people that can work with you in a receptive way. And that could be really fulfilling. Like there's some people out there that pull things out of you. There's got to be. I, I would like to have more opportunities to work with other people. You know, it's been so long that I'm just sort of hermiting got you well that then there it is that's the perfect i feel ending note for this is that i will Mm -hmm. wish you and give you that invitation for wellness towards perhaps if you're open to it having some kind of an informing the internet where it doesn't have to be a big thing it's just hey do you want to spend some time with me here's an exchange we can hang out right talk this stuff and and the best wishes on that going well because you you do have an energy about you in like the human design space where i felt honored that you reached out to me that you wanted to to have this conversation because i've been thinking about you and i've been kind of putting it off because some people in the in the space they can be you know people are what they are and i I don't want to try and initiate something that's not correct totally um yeah i don't know it just seemed like something that that had to happen i don't know i see you regularly and just eventually just like i want to talk to this guy you know yeah i didn't even you know i didn't i don't think i even proposed that we do a podcast or anything i was just like you want to talk sometime you know like true um yeah i just it just seemed like the the right progression of things that we should um Mm. have some sort Mm. of exchange so yeah and i deeply appreciate your willingness to be here and share some public space time with me for that conversation <laughs> it was cool man I, I hope we you know talk again more sometime yeah absolutely feel free to reach out if you ever have a thought or a question or have an informing or anything so for sure and and if you could send me the the direct link for your own website and stuff like that so that i can put it in the notes i don't have a i don't i have a website url but i don't know how to make it into a website but I am Neutrino Radio on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, something else. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We'll get that set up. We'll get that set up. Uh, anyway, I hope you have a good rest of your day, my friend. You too, okay. man. Bye for now. Later. <laughs>